Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Whole ton of people sent me this story. Said, Steve, check this out. A judge in Ohio got kicked off the bench. And I said, yep, I've heard the story. And I actually uh, did a version of this earlier when they reported that she'd gotten in trouble and was being investigated. The investigation's over. She's been kicked off the bench. So thank you for everyone for sending that. From Cleveland.com, Corey Schaefer wrote this. Ohio Supreme Court suspends Judge Pinky Carr, removing her from the Cleveland Municipal Court bench. The Ohio Supreme Court on Tuesday kicked longtime Cleveland Municipal Court Judge Pinky Carr off the bench and stripped her of her law license for committing a level of misconduct the majority of justice is called unprecedented. So that's pretty bad. By the way, in case you're curious, I've mentioned before that in most states, the Supreme Court of the state oversees the court system. And they're the ones who say what goes on in the courts and what doesn't go on in the courts. And they are the ones who can step in and say, okay, this judge has got to go. So they're the ones who do that. The justice has voted five to two to indefinitely suspend the law license for Pinky Carr. They call her the vivacious former assistant county prosecutor who ascended to judgeship in 2012 after helping send a serial killer to death row. So apparently that got her some attention, which she parlayed into an election. She will be suspended from judicial office without pay. The state's high court also on Tuesday ordered her to immediately cease and desist practicing law. So she cannot practice law and she cannot be a judge. Now, the without pay thing hurts, in case you're curious. Uh, The average salary, average, for a Cleveland Municipal Court judge is $172,000. I looked that up. Now, if you're on the job for a while, and maybe you're like the head judge or something, $192,000. But one seventy-two dollars is the average pay, and yes, they get great benefits. They get all the holidays off. Uh, they basically uh, work the hours they like. Uh, it's not uncommon that all the attorneys and parties and everybody show up for court right there at 8.30 or 9 a.m., and the judge will saunter out at 10.30 or 11 and go, hey, what's going on? All rise. So... Carr's unprecedented misconduct involved more than 100 stipulated incidents that occurred over a period of approximately two years and encompassed repeated acts of dishonesty, the blatant and systematic disregard of due process, the law, court orders, local rules, the disrespectful treatment of court staff and litigants, and the abuse of capious warrants and the court's contempt power, the Supreme Court said. That misconduct warrants an indefinite suspension from the practice of law. Now, some people always ask because they like to sit there and, and, and wonder about all the little nuanced details. And so someone is bound to be thinking right about now and saying, Steve, how do we know she really did these things? Is it, is it possible this whole thing is an elaborate hoax or setup or something? No, you'll notice the word stipulated in there. Uh, Carr's unprecedented misconduct involved more than 100 stipulated incidents. Meaning that when the charges were lodged against her and they said, here is what people are saying about you, you have the right to dispute that, to contest that. Instead of that, she stipulated that the allegations were correct. She basically said, not going to fight you on that. That is correct. I am responsible for all of these things. I did all of these things. And so the court says that misconduct warrants an indefinite suspension. The sanction is the most severe punishment the court can hand down, short of disbarment. And that's the thing. She did not get permanently disbarred. However, her ability to practice law has been suspended, meaning that there might come a time down the road where she can come back in and ask for the right to practice law again, and it probably would require her to show how she's done something or changed or come around to where she won't misbehave again. She can apply to the court to reinstate her license after two years, but she must first convince the justices that she has sufficiently addressed the issues that led the court to take her license from her. The court's majority handed down a more severe punishment than the two-year suspension recommended by the court's Board of Professional Conduct which said that Carr ruled her courtroom in a reckless and cavalier manner, unrestrained by the law or the court's rules. Chief Justice Maureen O'Connor and Justice Patrick Fisher and Jennifer Brunner joined the court's per curiam opinion. First Ohio District Court of Appeals Judge Beth Myers and 10th Ohio District Court of Appeals Judge Lisa Sadler sat in places 
uh, of, of the justices, Michael Donnelly and Melody Stewart, uh, and they also joined the majority. Donnelly and Stewart, who are both from Cuyahoga County, recused themselves from hearing the case for fear that it looked like they are biased because they were from the area. Uh, Justice Sharon Kennedy agreed with the findings of misconduct but wrote in a dissenting opinion that she would not have exceeded the court, uh, board's recommendation of a two-year suspension. Uh, the majority wrote in Tuesday's opinion that the court has previously suspended sitting judges who committed a single act of misconduct. Carr's misdeeds spanned two years and led to multiple people being wrongly arrested and deprived of their liberty, the majority of the justices wrote about. Carr, who had previously sought to explain her misconduct as a result of a mood disorder brought on by mistreated sleep apnea and menopause, asked the court to suspend her for two years with 18 months stayed. Uh, Carr could not be reached for comment by the media. Uh, her attorney, though, says we're disappointed with the severity of the sanction. Uh, he said that Carr apologized for her conduct and admitted to all the misconduct, which we said earlier. And uh, he said he did not know what she plans to do in the future. Now, the Ohio governor will appoint someone to take her seat until voters can elect a replacement in a future election. Now, her legal troubles do not end there. The Ohio Attorney General's Office confirmed to Cleveland.com that it has been appointed as a special prosecutor to review whether enough evidence exists to charge Carr with crimes for what she had done. It's unclear how long that review could take. She becomes the first practicing judge in Cleveland to be removed from the bench since 2014. So it, it happened in 2014 when the Ohio Supreme Court temporarily suspended Angela Stokes while her disciplinary case was pending. Stokes later resigned and agreed not to run for judge again, and the court reinstated her law license in 2016. And one little nuance you'll notice is they talk about somebody agreeing not to run again. And many people would have thought that you'd phrase it and say, well, they promised not to be a judge again. Well, to become a judge... You've got to either be appointed to a vacancy or get elected. So many of the laws addressing eligibility for judges talk about what you can and cannot do or be at the time of the election. So if there's an age limitation, and some states will actually say that there's an age limitation on judges, they'll say that they cannot run for election once they hit a certain age. But if they're in office and they turn that age, they stay there. So it's a, it's a minor nuance, but when the other judge agreed to not run for judge again, she's basically saying, I can never be judge again unless someone appoints her. Who would appoint her? So Carr's courtroom was empty shortly after 10 a.m. on Tuesday, and her name had been removed from the bench. So many judges have got a little nameplate up there, the Honorable So-and-So right there, right there. Investigation into Carr began at the outset of the uh, pandemic when she held in-person hearings on March 16th and 17th despite an order from the court's administrative judge declaring that all such hearings would be postponed. So the administrative judge who ran that courthouse said no in-person hearings. They say that Judge Carr held in-person hearings on the 16th and 17th. Now you might say, Steve, that's not the crime of the century. Oh, that's the first domino to fall. She also mocked an attorney who admitted to being nervous about being in the courtroom during that time. She issued arrest warrants for more than a dozen people who didn't show up because they'd heard that the courts were closed. After Cleveland.com and the Plain Dealer reported about the hearings, Carr told Early that she did not issue the warrants according to authorities. She repeated that in an interview with Channel 8 WJW. Carr said she held the hearings for those defendants who showed up and were unaware that their hearings had been postponed. For those who didn't show up, she said, she simply checked a box on court files that indicated they did not show up. She said, as far as issuing warrants for their arrest, absolutely untrue. Uh, Cleveland.com, the plain dealer, requested copies of video from Carr's courtroom that showed her issuing arrest warrants for people who did not show up. Supreme Court's Office of Disciplinary Counsel investigates allegations of misconduct against lawyers and judges it opened an investigation into Carr that later expanded to her conduct over several years. The examination found that Carr was jailing people in an effort to get them to pay fines to make more money for the court. It also revealed that Carr once ordered a woman to spend 15 days in jail because the woman rolled her eyes and made disparaging remarks about Carr's courtroom during a hearing. 
Carr berated the woman, held a contempt hearing, which she failed to recuse herself from, and mischaracterized her actions as a basis to send her to jail, the court found. And you have to understand that a court, a judge, can find somebody to be in contempt, which can be a serious thing. And it depends on the rules of the state and also how serious the contempt charge is. But more often than not, you want another judge to hear the contempt hearing so that there's no bias involved. And the fact that somebody rolled their eyes at her. Now, if somebody does that to you while you're talking to them, yeah, it's annoying. And should people try to avoid annoying behavior in courts? I always say yes. And I know some people are going to say, Steve, if I want to roll my eyes, I can roll my eyes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. But remember, the judges have got such broad discretion. You want everything you can do to make them like you, to rule in your favor, or to be good to you. So if you want to go in and roll your eyes and then you get hammered by the judge, go, well, you know, that's that that you, know, you could have avoided that if you hadn't rolled your eyes. Now, I'm pointing out, though, that rolling your eyes and having a judge waffle on her discretion is one thing. But throwing you in jail for 15 days is obviously absurd. Uh, She negotiated plea deals with defendants on behalf of city prosecutors who were not present and then falsified journal entries that said prosecutors were involved. (laughs) An act that the court's majority said, in its opinion, could amount to a crime. That could be a crime because she's falsifying public records. And getting back to an earlier statement about the court administrative judge, you have to understand, I mentioned before, that the Ohio Supreme Court runs the entire court system. And down below that are your courts of appeal and then all your trial courts. And so this is a municipal court. This is one of the lower level courts, but a lot of stuff happens there. And so this building, let's refer to the entire building, okay? There's a building with a bunch of courtrooms in it. That's a courthouse. The courthouse is run quite often by a chief judge or an administrative judge. Depends what they call it in different states. And so there will be a judge who runs the courthouse, okay? So each courtroom for the most part, is run by the judge in that courtroom. The building and the entire structure is run by an administrative or a head judge. Now, when I say the structure, I'm not talking about the physical structure of the building. I'm talking about the org, the org chart, the organizational chart. But also the rules. What time does the building open? What time do they close? Where do the bailiffs stand? How many bailiffs do we have? Do we have a bailiff per courtroom and a bunch of them out in the hallways? Uh, And what are the rules for the hallways? And I've actually heard people arguing about whether or not there are rules for the hallways in a courthouse that are different than, say, the rules of the hallway of City Hall. And there absolutely can be different rules if the chief judge has ruled and said, in my courthouse, these are the rules. And I know some people will say, Steve, that's wrong. Well, you can take it up with your state Supreme Court because your state Supreme Court has probably said that the chief judge in a courthouse can set the rules for the entire building. So it's not just the courtrooms. It can be the hallways. It can be the vestibule. It can be, it can be anything underneath that roof. Okay, so that's what was going on here is the administrative judge, the chief judge of this courthouse, had said this courthouse is closed. And when the chief judge says that, it is a fact. So when she reopens her courtroom in defiance of the chief judge, she's doing something very wrong. The severity and scope of Carr's judicial misconduct are unprecedented in Ohio, the disciplinary counsel's filing said. She also initially misled her character witnesses and her psychiatrist by telling them that she was facing discipline because she did not check the correct box on a form that then triggered the warrants to be issued. After the disciplinary counsel filed an amended complaint, Carr acknowledged committing the misconduct. She also entered the Ohio Lawyers Assistance Program, a treatment program for attorneys with substance abuse or mental health issues, and began a mentorship program with the Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Judge Joan Seinenberg. Carr sat in Seinenberg's courtroom and watched her demeanor. Tuesday's opinion noted that Carr's attorneys had asked the court to find that negative stories in the press about Carr's misconduct amounted to a sanction and should count as mitigating evidence. She's already suffered enough. Look what they did to her in the papers. 
I heard some guy up in Michigan's talking about her. <laughs> the majority of the justices wrote that they declined to find that truthful media reports of Judge Carr's flagrant disregard of the administrative order suspending most courthouse activity in the early days of the COVID constitute mitigating evidence. So they didn't buy it, and you shouldn't either. And so, you know, we've talked before about this, but it's worth mentioning one more time. And that is, there are codes of conduct for attorneys and judges. So an attorney's got to behave a certain way and up to a certain standard. And a judge, who's also an attorney, has got to abide by those standards, plus the extra ones for judges. And they often talk about how judges should avoid impropriety, that is doing bad things, and avoid the appearance of impropriety. So anytime something happens where a judge looks bad, there's a good chance they violated that rule, the appearance of impropriety. Now, here we're talking about hundreds of examples of misconduct, which she stipulated to, which means she admitted to the fact that she did them. And obviously, we didn't go through all 100 incidents and say what they all were, but it doesn't matter. She stipulated to them. Now, does she have mental issues? Does she have problems that that need to be dealt with? Quite possibly. I don't know. I'm, I'm, (laughs) I'm not a psychiatrist, okay? But it sounds like, at the very least, she does, because she says, I've got problems, I need help, and good. Go get the help and see if that helps. A couple of years from now, she can come back and say, I at least want to be able to practice law. And if she can convince them that she's done that, she can get her law license back. But short of that, she's off the bench and she can't practice law. And it sounds to me like she was a little bit out of control there on the bench. It's just a question of what caused that. Uh, I can tell you that I've seen bad judges before. Uh, I'm not sure I've seen anybody with this many instances of misconduct. But I did the video a while back about Judge Brennan in, uh, in, in uh, Michigan, and she wound up not only getting kicked off the bench, but she went to jail for a little while. Uh, and I'd been in front of her. Now, I had never suffered anything that rose to the level of misconduct for which she could have gotten in trouble for. But I heard stories, and I, and I saw stuff in the papers that certainly did. So... Uh, That was a crazy story also. But here we have a case where a judge is accused of over 100, over 100 incidents of misconduct while on the bench and apparently didn't understand even how serious it was until partway through the procedure and then suddenly stipulated to all of us, yep, I did all of that. I'm sorry, I did all of that. But it's caused by physical and mental issues. So Ohio Supreme Court suspends Judge Pinky Carr, removing her from the Cleveland Municipal Court bench. And yeah, she's losing a job that earned her $172,000, right around there, plus great benefits and, and major holidays off. So there you go. Uh, thanks, everyone who sent it. I got it from so many people, I couldn't mention them all. Cleveland.com published it. Corey Schaefer wrote it. And there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I haven't been everywhere, but it's on my list.